Padua, Italy. A Benedictine monastery sits like a priest at prayer in the early Mediterranean morning. Here grows a garden which would be the envy of any modern cook. It contains the finest collection of herbs imaginable, more than 400 in all. This was one of the first formal herb gardens in Europe, and the plants are still cared for as lovingly as they were nearly 500 years ago. Thriving here, are some of the world's most famous cooking aids. Herbs like sage, whose flowers crown the strongly aromatic leaves. They not only taste good, they do good. The name sage comes from the Latin word salvia, meaning health. Time, the Greeks paid homage to this representative of courage, style, grace and elegance. Rosemary, the herb whose spiky leaves were believed to guard the living and the dead from all evil. But these gentle plants play a role far beyond the kitchen. Still today, the monks use them to treat our common ills, a tradition begun by St. Benedict, who founded the order 1,500 years ago. Sweet marjoram, the herb of happiness. The magnificent perfume of the leaves makes a walk through the herb garden one of pure delight. Basil, the odd man out. This fine flavored plant traveled across the sea from India to take its place here. And bay, these shiny leaves were the symbol of glory for poets and the heroes of ancient Rome. But what are herbs? The botanist would say a herb is only a herb if its soft stem dies to the ground at the end of the growing season. But to most people, a herb is the leaf of any plant whose smell and taste improves the quality of a meal. Brother Eusebio dries these plants of summer in an airing tower, away from the harsh rays of the sun. In four or five days, they will be ready. He uses a method which has hardly changed since the time of Christ. will defend us by land. Our defences sea, from sea are weak. You will all work hard. You will pay heed to your masters, so that when the siege comes, as come it will, we will be prepared. You will all kneel. These British children are learning what it is like to live in the 14th century. Regi, regiae, regnoque nostro, parcem et concordiam. Amen. 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 For 24 hours, they exist without any modern comforts. There's no tea or lemonade to drink, only water or fresh herb teas. If they want to eat, they'll have to strangle a chicken and cook it using wild herbs. If they cut themselves or get ill, it's to herbs they'll turn for a cure. Herbs like spring beauty. Its small green leaves tenderize meat, quench the thirst, and aid the digestion. Now take a bit of this and taste it, because I don't want you to ever forget what this tastes like. Because if you don't remember the names, you can always taste and see whether that's a sweet spice or not. If it's a sweet one, then you'll want it for your blamanger. If it isn't a sweet one, and it's a sharp herb or a hot one, then you will need it for your soups and your messes. Put it in your mouth, girl, and chew it up and try it. That won't bite you. Look what I find in the woods. Oh, you found plenty of the salad again. Isn't that That's nice? Mince. That's lame, is it? Yeah. Jill Davis, a modern herbalist, is helping out and identifying some of the more unusual plants. Nice. 
I'll tell you what I found. What else do you think? Especially the poisonous ones, like the wild carrot. Her own herb garden recreates the delights of herb growing with centuries of tradition behind it. Golden marjoram and carpets of purple thyme laid out like the earliest English gardens in the form of knots. The clippings of all these herbs were strewn on the path to perfume the air, increasing the pleasure of an evening stroll. Jill Davis rebuilt this garden from a ruin. She wanted to resurrect the great knowledge of herbs, which had become entombed in history. The garden supplies the kitchen with a miscellany of flavors, parsley, red basil, young tender sage leaves and more spring beauty. Jill is working to reverse the decline in the use of herbs in the last 200 years. In medicine, they've been replaced by modern drugs. In food, by the more powerful flavor of tropical spices. At one time, spices, because of their price, were the prerogative of kings and princes. It was to the gentle and graceful herbs, growing happily in all corners of the world, that housewives looked to give zest to their meals and to cure their sick. This tranquil, fragrant garden is a loving reminder of what they still have to offer. Fresh herbs need careful preparation. Fine chopping with a knife releases the oil and the taste. Then there's the separating of the flavorful leaves from the bitter stalks. Jill is making an intriguing herb salad based on an everyday 17th century recipe. It uses at least 35 ingredients, a few for flavor, some for health, many for decoration. She is perhaps thinking of the words of John Evelyn, an early guru of the kitchen who wrote, every plant must bear its part and they must fall into their places like the notes of music and nothing must be harsh or grating. She uses the blue flowers of borage along with the purple of thyme to finish the picture. This is an art which all can enjoy. But you don't always eat them. You can just borrow their flavor. Thyme, sage, bay, two kinds of marjoram, and dill. Strong herbs, fresh or dried. Tie them together in a bundle and you have a faggot, as the English used to call it for centuries. What the French know as a bouquet garni. Cooked with fresh tomato soup, it lends a subtle blend of tastes. Pass your plate over. Summer, Fresh herbs are made for summer meals. I always like it sobbing into the bread, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, some borage. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you very okay. much. Absolutely Jill has just prepared a dill and yoghurt dressing to pour over the local fresh crab. The best kind of meal is an evocation of all the senses, of sight, smell, taste, and even sound. There's the aroma of fresh dill, the sharpness of the yogurt, the crisp crunch of lettuce, and the bouquet of wildflowers. Much of Jill's learning comes from these beautiful treaties on plants, the herbal. Many were written in Latin in medieval times when the church was the source of all learning. However, the oldest herbal in the British Museum is written in the local language. Even in the ninth century, 
an understanding of herbs was in the realm of the common people. This seemingly pastoral scene is one huge factory, nature's factory maybe, but a highly productive one nevertheless. Not many people have access to a Jill Davis garden or to a Mediterranean monastery, but here in Provence, in the south of France, that problem is solved. Here, herb cultivation is on a commercial scale. Crops are raised, harvested, and dried under the summer sun, using methods not far removed from the monks of Padua. Dried, these herbs are specially suited to the stronger flavored dishes of winter. These sacks of brittle leaves give a taste of summer all through the year. The crinkled woolly leaves of dried sage form the essential flavor for stuffings and sausages and cut the richness of duck and pork. Dried marjoram. These leaves only keep their flavor for a few months, but perfume a hearty winter pizza. And dried bay. Just one leaf will give a rich character to winter soups and stews. These dried leaves give the world the soul of the Mediterranean. Taijichuan, an ancient way of dissuading muggers. Today, the most common form of exercise in China. But staying healthy to the Chinese involves more than mere exercise. It involves eating to stay fit. This is the Tongreng Tang restaurant in Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan. It's what you might call a health food restaurant with a difference. The old men come here after their exercise. They will tell the man who runs the restaurant not what they want to eat, but how they feel. And he may suggest something like sea cucumbers stuffed with garlic tops. The herb, the garlic top, speeds the goodness to the part of the body that needs it. Once it's been boiled, that is. Everything on this platter has been recommended for the old man's health. Even the drink, three snake wine, has beneficial properties. If all this sounds like a bit of medical quackery, consider this. Five years ago, this man was bedridden. Now, every day, he walks five miles for his exercise and to get his daily dose of tonic food. And he's brought a whole new lease of life. This pharmacy is part of the restaurant. From here, you get your herbs to take home and make tea. Some of the preparations are mixtures which go back thousands of years, made from a vast range of herbs and minerals. Ma Huang, Qing Gao, Yu Jin, Hui Xian, Che Qian Se. In the West, when people get sick, they go to the doctor for a cure. In ancient China, they paid their doctors to keep them well. When they fell ill, they felt the doctor was not doing his job, so they stopped paying him. There is great faith today in these centuries-old herb medicines. The Chinese have not lost touch with their valuable past. And other traditions are as important today as they have ever been. Traditions like getting the meal of the day ready. Coriander has been called Chinese parsley. From the outside wash place to the kitchen, to be mixed with raw ground pork. This is the filling for the day's supply of jiaozi, dumplings. The finely chopped leaves form a mixture rich in vitamin C. Especially when the cook uses them in such large quantities. This mixture is for dumplings. But if the leaves are left whole, they are good for salads.
Dozens of thin rounds of a kind of pasta are rolled out to form the case. This is a daily job for the families of the north, who are especially fond of dough and pasta products. Something similar, perhaps inspired by China, exists in the West, the pasta of the Mediterranean. The Italian city of Bologna, only 60 miles from the herb garden of Padua. It is the home of some of Italy's richest cooking. Bologna is also the home of one of Italy's most famous cooking schools. The dishes learned today will tomorrow grace the tables of restaurants and homes around the world. And responsible for it all is one of Italy's favorite cooks, Marcella Hazan. And um, you see the beautiful flower, zucchini flower and asparagus and, and the fava beans that are fresh and the artichokes, peppers. And here we have the herbs. All the herbs that uh, they are, I'm going to show it to you. This is basil. And in the class, we are going to use this basil. This, as you see, is not very tall like in, in other countries. It's shorter. And the, the leaves are, oh, smell it. It's beautiful, no? We're going to make a sauce for pasta with this. And you can have a basil with a tomato, fresh tomato with mozzarella, or you can have it in a summer pizza, white pizza with um, mozzarella. This is bay leaf, fresh bay leaf. And if you cut the leaf, you can smell it, smell. We cook with this, and you know many things, also pear. We are going to do some poached pear with basil. That is very good, and wine. And uh, we have uh, rosemary. Look how beautiful it is, a big bunch of rosemary. Oh, my. Oh. If you smell rosemary, you smell a meat roast, which is very good. We are going to do with this some meat roast with rosemary. Yes, take a picture of this. This is beautiful. You have a picture of me with the rosemary. Okay. Isn't nice? Okay, now let's go to see the other part of the market because uh, it's very interesting. Come on with me. Herbs have always been essential to Italian cooking, the father of fine European food. A veal casserole changes its complexion depending on the herb that accompanies it. Italians understand how to draw the best from ingredients. The sautéing of parsley in butter releases its aromatic flavor. Today, Marcella is going to make tortelloni. It is a dish of stuffed pasta with a fresh herb sauce, a special delight for the cooks and chefs who are studying here. Start off with eggs and ricotta, a fresh, moist, unsalted cheese. Parmesan cheese. And chopped parsley. These ingredients bring out the lively flavor of the herb. I think I can put a little more parsley. Official taster. Come here. Dimmi quanto sale manca. Her son, with the sensitive palate. The difference between tortelloni and tortellini has confused many. Tortelloni is made from square pieces of pasta, tortellini from round. So long as it tastes good, the Italians don't seem to mind what you call it. Now, two, three here, around me. Come on, come down, come down. Come down, you do what I do. No, you put one corner up here, not all the way up. And squeeze. Squeeze, never touch the middle. 
after you hold it with one hand like this, pull up this a little, put your index, uh, like say me, no? Put it down here, so it hold up this. You have the thumb free, pull up this a little, catch it, and roll it back, and you have the tortellino. Okay, put it together, squeeze. Yes, a little, a little, not much. Okay, you learn. To celebrate this kind of pasta, a Bolognese writer wrote a play called The Inventor of Tortellini. In a dream, the hero, a cook, sees his employer's wife sleeping in the nude. He falls in love. But what to do? To confess his love is to lose his job, maybe even his head. So, as a token of his unspoken passion, he invents a pasta, a pasta in the shape of her belly button. Right? <laughs> we'll do it close enough. Okay. And that is why you put the pasta in the cloth. All at once. All at once. Mix. Wood spoon. Metal now will break it. Because metal spoon has a cutting edge. And in a little while you will see all your tortelloni floating here. They come up. They start to say, I'm ready. The moment that you smell sage in your sauce, the sauce is done. Because sometimes if you wait too long, the sauce will become bitter. Now when you see the butter getting a little color, the sauce is ready and take it out from the fire. That is done. Don't tell me that it takes too long to make a sauce. The pasta has sealed in the magnificent flavor of the parsley and ricotta cheese stuffing. This is like the fried sage that I was telling you. I'm going to cover up the sage. All that it's taken to lift this dish above the ordinary is the addition of two simple herbs. As one eminent cook has said, herbs ask so little, but they give so much. Okay. To the table. 